Hello Indie Game fans, I think that the Microsoft Showcase and E3 have been fairly consistently good over the past couple of years, and while I don't have any particular affinity for their first party titles, ID at Xbox and Game Pass have been excellent for indie developers so far. While in the past, we had gems like Cuphead appearing during the event, where this footage is taken from E3 2016, there were not that many new announcements this year, understandably so, where a couple of not so indie titles did catch my eye as well, so here they are in full. Let's begin with Atomic Heart, one of the most insane looking games since everything shown off is wild and crazy. It's a first person adventure shooter RPG that looks similar to Bioshock, only set in the Soviet Union, with a mixture of Soviet tech, robots, mannequins and some fleshy abominations looks super fascinating. It comes to us from Russian developer Munfish, who are about 40 percent strong, so not a small indie team by any means, hence its spot on the list, but it's still a game that I'm looking forward to. Approaching the mother I can't believe I'm really here! Psychonauts headquarters! Look at all these gadgets! The mind is the final frontier of humanity. I'm ready for anything. The long-in-development Psychonauts 2 was announced 6 years ago and will be of interest to indie game fans since it's the sequel to a cult classic from 2005, where 16 years between games is getting up there in the record books. Time for justice! It's a 3D platformer in an era where very few of these are being made, about a team of spies with psychic powers known as the Psychonauts, where the in-game mechanic of being able to enter someone's mind leads to plenty of creative level designs. For you. The mission is falling apart. A psychonaut must always remember how to roll with it. Since we last saw this game, Double Fine was acquired by Microsoft and the game does look a lot more polished as compared to earlier footage, and the best part is that it's releasing next month. What am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? This is a mission about the fate of the world. Can you do that? Yes, if I can find some bacon. I'm going to ignore that last part. However, do note that this has gone full AAA with regards to the price being a whopping $60 game, so make of that what you will. I mentioned the spiritual successor to the Sukuden series, Iudin Chronicle 100 Heroes last year during its Kickstarter campaign, being of note since it will involve most of the original developers that work on the classic series who are bringing it to a new age. We did get some new footage that shows off more characters, where the 2D sprites on 3D backgrounds in the style of Octopath Traveler does seem to be the way forward for modern JRPGs. Most interestingly, while this has a window for 2023, we did get a glimpse of a brand new game named Yuden Chronicle Rising right at the end of this trailer, which is an action platformer planned for 2022, so that's something to look out for as well. If you have not watched this trailer in full, I really love the nonsense in this, so sit back and enjoy and I'll be back in a bit. We begin by hearing an old, wise-sounding voice, and we see a quiet, peaceful setting. This will make our game seem big and important. Now, something must break the serenity. Will this creature be in the game? No, say goodbye to it forever. Suddenly, and for no reason, people running. These pointless slow motion shots make everything seem cool and should bolster pre-sale numbers. That wah sound can mean only one thing. We must gaze over an epic shot of a world and there should be lens flares. Now we see our hero. But only their silhouette, because the developers haven't finished the design. 
Or finished the story. Or finished any gameplay that's actually ready to show. In fact, the only thing they have finished is the title. Yes, The Outer Worlds 2 is decidedly not indie, given that Obsidian has always been a huge studio and is now under the Xbox Game Studios banner, but given the quality of the first attempt at a Fallout like game, I do have high hopes for the sequel. Moving on to proper indies, let's kick things off with Party Animals, a wobbly physics multiplayer brawler that's more or less gang beasts but with cute animals. It's hard to believe but that game is 4 years old at this point, so a newer, more polished version of this physics brawler could be neat, where I do love the animal models in this, although it will live and die by how the physics and control feel as well as the variety in game modes and levels. So, how was your day? Oh, uh, you know. I have something to share. What is this, my birthday? We're having a baby. Another long-in-development title got a release date with a time loop thriller, 12 minutes, being first revealed in 2015, so it has been a while. It did get some big celebrity names as the voice cast, which perhaps makes it not so indie, but a title that I've definitely been looking forward to. I love you. I say this a lot too, but back at you. You have shown an aptitude for applying lethal solutions to conflicted situations. We wish to test your abilities. Short little trailer for the cyberpunk action RPG The Ascent, one that I featured on the channel multiple times, most recently in previewing it for July, where it launches at the end of the month, making it a no-brainer to pick up. First things first, I do have to apologize since the original music for the Somerville trailer is copyrighted, so I had to swap it out, which does somewhat diminish the intended effect, although I tried my best to find something in a similar vein, but do give the actual trailer a watch as well. This is a moody puzzle platformer set in some sort of sci-fi catastrophe where you're journeying to make your family whole again. The stinger for this trailer is one to watch, instilling a sense of dread in me as someone with a young kid where the limbo or inside vibes are strong with this. Unsurprisingly, it is because this is from a new studio formed by the ex-CEO of Playdead, but given how great those two games were, I'm sure that this will be impressive as well. I cracked a very wide smile when the Monomi Park logo showed up, since the original Slime Rancher is one of my all-time favourite indie games, being very impressive in scope, environments and sheer amount of content both during early access and post-launch, so the announcement of a sequel was a no-brainer 4 years after release. Given the cartoony and stylized look of the first, at first glance, the graphical improvements don't seem to be mind-blowing, but if you do make a side-by-side -side comparison, you do see improvements in textures and lighting. This continues the adventure of our heroine, where she travels from the far, far range across the slime sea to a new place named Rainbow Island, which means more slimes to wrangle and more secrets to uncover. Okay. 
you know it, I know it, me being me, of course Replace comes in at number 1, the super slick 2.5D pixel art action platformer that is not to be missed. It seems as though someone or some people got tired of waiting for the last night and decided to make their own where you play as an artificial intelligence trapped in a human body against its own will. If that's not an intriguing premise, I don't know what is, but come on, how great does this game look? The lighting is especially fantastic, but the cyberpunk world looks intriguing as well, so for being everything that I want in a game, it takes the number one spot although I really don't like the name of this game. For more great upcoming pixel art titles, watch this video and I will see you after the jump.